Hey guys, my name is Jared and this is my 2018 Tesla Model 3. I've had it for five years now and I just passed 50,000 miles driving this car. So I thought it'd be a good opportunity to give an overview of my experience with the car. Things I like, things I wish were a little bit different, but my general experience. So let's get started. This car has a name. The name of this Tesla is Blueberry. Not Blubbery, Blueberry. And it's a reference to one of my favorite TV shows of all time. And if you don't know what it is, I'll play a clip. One, the Blueberry. To the Blueberry. Everyone relax. We'll take the Blueberry. To the Blue. Sean. Berry. Don't scratch that. The Blueberry can only do, what, 60? I feel like I've been incarcerated in a Blueberry. And I know what you're thinking. You're just adding to the stereotype of Tesla owners who have a vanity plate. I was hesitant to do it at first. I don't know why exactly I did. I think it was just because of the TV show reference that I wanted to do it. But I hope it gives you a little laugh whenever you see me driving down the road. When I got this car, it was the long range all wheel drive model. That means at a full charge, it could go up to 310 miles before needing to charge again. Now, the thing about electric vehicles is you don't always get that. It's dependent on driving habits. So if you've got a lead foot off the line, your battery's not gonna last as long. A lot of people wanna know how fast can it go zero to 60? And all Teslas are fast. Driving an electric car is so much different than driving a regular gas car. The acceleration is really fast. This one in particular can go zero to 60 in 4.2 seconds, but for a $2,000 software upgrade, you can drop that down to 3.7 seconds. Buying a Tesla in 2018 is a little bit different than buying a Tesla now. The process is the same, but how much you pay is different. When I bought this car in 2018, I paid $58,000 before tax. That includes paint and tire upgrades. Now, if you were to buy the same trim level, same car, it would be just over $48,000, a difference of almost $10,000. Tesla is always changing their pricing, and right now, it seems to be in the consumer's favor. One of the things that I love about the car is the overall design. It's a really good looking car, and I think it's held up well over the last five years. Just about every angle of this car looks great except for one in my opinion and that's the front of the car for some reason whenever i look at the front of the car i don't know it's just not as good as the rest of the car so what do you get for that price well i think the inside tells a little better story <laughs> i have to lift up my leg because my hip still hurts i like that it's just minimal there's not a lot of stuff going on everything is right here on the screen or on the steering wheel in front of you. Having physical buttons with a large screen that adapts to the information that you ask it is great, but sometimes it can be a little bit frustrating while you're driving if you don't know where the thing is that you're looking for. But most everything like music, air control, navigation is pretty easy to navigate through on the screen. I think it's a good physical button to digital screen ratio. However, some of the newer Teslas are removing their gear and blinker stocks, which I think is a very unique and interesting choice. Something else worth noting about the inside of the car is the leg room. Everyone that's gotten into the car hasn't really ever complained about there not being enough leg room, even in the back. It does a pretty good job. And um, I know it doesn't really apply to me because I'm short, I'm not tall at all, so I don't have to worry about leg room. But for those tall people out there, I think it does a pretty good job at having lots of leg room for being a smaller car. One of my complaints though, is that while you're driving, especially on freeway speeds, is the road noise. I feel like this is a pretty loud car. It is their entry level car, so I know it's not gonna be the best of the best, but I feel like having a reduced road noise would go a long way in making this car even better. There's a good amount of storage space in the trunk and the front, more so than normal cars, because you have that additional space below in the trunk and up front in the frunk. It still confuses people to this day when I go and grab something from the frunk, they're like, what the heck, where's the engine? And usually I'm grabbing things that I forgot about a long time ago, like, I don't know, our leftovers from a restaurant and it's like a week old and then you're like, crap. I left that in the frunk for a week. At least it wasn't inside the car. There's a lot of videos about this, so I'm not gonna go into a ton of detail, but I wanted to talk about full self-driving a little bit. 
It's good. I really enjoy it, especially when I'm on the freeway. And that's primarily where I use it and see the most success from it. When I'm in the city or the neighborhood, I don't use it a ton because I do have to take over when it does make mistakes. And honestly, I'd rather just be driving at that point. But it is really fun to see it Take a turn, stop at a stoplight, go when the light turns green, change lanes automatically. You can see the differences between Enhanced Autopilot and Full Self-Driving on their website, but right now I think Enhanced Autopilot is plenty. Really when it comes down to it, I'm using Full Self-Driving or Enhanced Autopilot to lower my stress while I'm driving. It allows me to look around in my surroundings a little bit more than I normally would on the freeway and it makes it more enjoyable. But you see it, we've been driving and I haven't been using my hands very often. Every once in a while, you'll get a little notification to tug on the steering wheel or apply force just to make sure that you're still paying attention. Another place where autopilot or full self-driving does really well is stop and go traffic. I wish there was a little bit more control on the distance that you could follow a car. For stop and go traffic, I wanna be closer so people aren't sneaking in all of the time, but when you're going normal freeway speeds, it, it does a good job. When I first bought the car, it felt like updates were coming out all of the time, and it was really exciting to see all of the new cool features that were coming out. And I feel like now that the updates are coming out slower, it's more just like fine tuning things. We're not getting a ton of new features, but the cool thing about a car like this is that software updates come out and you can have a completely new car or a new experience, whereas other cars, that was like not a thing. So that's one of the exciting things about having a Tesla is like it's a piece of tech that you can upgrade. So let's talk a little bit more about driving on the freeway with full self-driving. Typically when I use that, I'm going on a road trip. And when you're going on a road trip, you charge a lot. The nice thing about the Tesla is the supercharger network. They have tens of thousands of superchargers all over the country, all over the world. So I never have to worry about where I'm going to charge. If at all, I have to wait a little bit, but that's only happened like once or twice in the five years that I've been using superchargers. Yes, it does add time on your road trip. Ellie and I took a road trip and we both took a vehicle. She was in the gas car and I was in this car. It added about 40 minutes on a five hour road trip. I would say that's pretty significant, especially if you have kids. That is something to think about, but you're also not paying the same premium that you are when you fill up a gas tank. Currently, gas is a lot more expensive than charging your car. And sometimes when you're on your road trip, it's nice to have a little break. And a lot of these superchargers have a place for you to have something to eat, go to the bathroom, change the baby's diaper, what have you, let the dogs out. Um, and that is a nice thing. It kind of, for lack of a better word, forces you to take a little break on your road trip. Charging at a supercharger has its pros and cons for sure. But the thing that I love most is that I can come home, grab this little guy, and charge my Tesla so I have a fully charged battery every single morning if I want to. And the cost is so much less than filling up your car with gas. Batteries do degrade over time and you're not gonna get the full charge that you did when you first got the car. So like I said at the beginning, I got about 310 miles per full charge. And now after driving for about five years, I'm getting about 285, 290 miles per full charge. I'm not fully charging all that often because the more you do that, the, the faster it degrades. Um, most of my driving is in town driving. So charging it up to 80% is all I really need, especially if I'm doing that regularly. I only charge 100% when I'm doing road trips and that doesn't happen a ton, especially because we have a big family and we take the gas car. Speaking of gas, let's talk about price comparison between charging and gas. When you go to Tesla's website, they have a pretty general estimator so you can compare your gas price to your charging price. They estimate that you'll spend about $1,400 a year in gas. And I know a lot of people are probably laughing at that because it's so low. And some people are laughing because it might be high, but they also estimate that you'll spend about $400 a year in charging your Tesla. And that's all dependent on your driving habits. But they say about $1,000 savings per year that you drive on the road. That cost difference right there is something to think about. But just like how gas prices changes, where you charge can change the price of 
charging as well. Whether you're charging at home or at a supercharger, those prices can vary, so you wanna keep that in mind. The only time I really think about charging my Tesla is when we go on road trips. Obviously, I'm using the supercharger and I can get from point A to point B just fine. Where I worry is when I'm stopped somewhere and gonna stay there for an extended period of time and there's not a supercharger. Lots of places have what's called destination chargers. And those are slower chargers, but still a heck of a lot faster than plugging into a 110 or a home outlet. You can charge with that, it'll just take a really, really long time. But things like hotels have chargers that charge faster than home outlets that can get you by. It's just kind of annoying to have to go there, leave your car there for a few hours and then come back and pick it up. If every house had a 240 or a electric car charger, that would be amazing. And I think we'll get to that point at some time. But that's one of the biggest worries that I have when it comes to having an electric vehicle. I think the ideal scenario for families is having one electric car and one gas car. Up until the point we have electric cars that have 500 plus mile ranges. I think we'd worry a heck of a lot less if we got to that point. So after five years and 50,000 miles of driving this Tesla Model 3, what do I think of it? I still love it. It has changed the way that I think about driving. Things from one pedal driving, regenerative braking, full self-driving or autopilot or what have you. I feel like when I have this car, it feels like owning a little piece of the future, even though it's five years old at this point. So as we end this video, my question to you, would you ever purchase a Tesla or an electric vehicle for that matter? If you are interested in purchasing a Tesla, I have a referral code down below that will give you free supercharging miles. Now my next question, does Elon Musk influence the way you think about buying a Tesla? Are you more likely to buy a Tesla because of Elon Musk or are you less likely to buy a Tesla because of Elon Musk? I would love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I hope it gave you some insight on owning a Tesla. I love it. I can't wait for future iterations to see what other car companies have to compete with or even pass up Tesla. And we'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.